Last night I watched All Access, Stavern versus Wilder. Um, 20 minute program, reasonably well put together. Good opportunity to get a greater insight into these two guys' lives. Uh, I don't think it. you didn't get as much from it as like one of the Floyd Mayweather All Accesses, but there was still you know, an interesting outlook into both guys. As I say, uh, Bermain Stavern, he comes across well. He seems like a very laid-back, easy-going, quietly confident type guy. He says that his nickname's the IRS, uh, and he's going to uh, expose Deontay Wilder for what he is, which is a fraud. He appears to be training hard. He looks ready to go. He looks angry, uh, and I think what he, yeah, you know, the one bit I got from him last night is Bermain Stavern. He's this quiet, sort of low-key guy, but to me last night he showed some determination, and he also that was combined with he was the way he was talking about the Chris Ariola fight. He said, "I knew he was going to rush in. I waited. At the end of the first round, I caught him with a hook." You can tell this guy, he's not just a sort of punch-drunk brawler. This is a guy who understands boxing. This is a guy with amateur pedigree. This is a guy who looked at his opponent, saw a potential weakness, set a trap, was patient, waited, capitalised upon that. I think that's really, really relevant with Deontay Wilder. Because Deontay Wilder's a guy who clearly has frailties. He's not the finished article. Um, you know, and Deontay Wilder's another heavyweight who can be prone to rushing in, especially after he's just landed. I hate to keep using these examples, but look at the Hay sparring, look at the Harrison fight. Potentially a smart fighter who's calculated, who's ring savvy, who's experienced like the main Stavern, could catch him, could exploit those weaknesses. We shall see. Deontay Wilder. You know, there was a touching piece about his daughter. It's not new to me. It's probably new to a lot of casual fans just tuning in. You can see that the guy is a likeable guy. He's charismatic. He's got a bit of a story. But, to my eyes, they're overconfident. You know, I don't think Deontay Wilder's scared of Bermain Stavern. But I wonder if his camp is giving him some misconceptions about what exactly he is. Deontay Wilder, look at him, he's six foot six, six foot seven. He's got a brilliant sort of body. He's an Olympian. The guy obviously has great sporting pedigree. What I would say is that the way they were doing these sort of exercises with him, which was like uh they were doing some sort of exercise which involved sort of squatting and then throwing weights up and bending into weird angles and then exploding and they were saying no other heavyweight in the world could do stuff like this so I, I don't know what they're actually trying to achieve with these sort of alternative strength and conditioning exercises they're doing with him I mean the way they were describing him is like the ultimate athlete in heavyweight boxing now, I appreciate he's a very well-muscled guy. He's got a fantastic six-pack. He's got that Olympian pedigree. But this isn't a guy who moves around the ring like Bryant Jennings. He isn't a guy with, like, sort of dynamic footwork. He isn't... Whilst I appreciate he may be an athletic guy in general, he isn't what I'd describe as, like, a boxing athlete. He doesn't have the same sort of... Uh, explosiveness and movement to my eyes like a David Hay type fighter what he is is a knockout artist I mean for my eye he is a knockout artist I think it's very very unlikely he outpoints Bermain Stavern I just don't think he's got yeah for me the guy's robotic and I just wonder whether they're going down the wrong route here trying to tell the guy that he's the sort of great athlete of the sport and the He's more better conditioned than anyone else. I, mean, I think they said he's the best conditioned heavyweight in the world. I mean, let's be honest, the guy hasn't gone beyond four rounds here. 
I know in terms of a body beautiful contest, he certainly wins over Bermain Stavern. But we know Bermain Stavern can go 12 rounds against a tough opponent in Chris Ariola. If it gets to rounds 9 and 10, I doubt it will, but if it does, Deontay Wilder, who's never been to those depths, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how well he paces himself, whereas we know Bermain Stavern will still be in the fight at that point. It's difficult. Um, I just didn't understand. I mean, the casual fan who's maybe going to tune into this fight and hasn't seen all of Deontay's fights are probably left with the impression that he's some kind of David Hay style mover and he's you know can fight at all different heights, different angles, and his, his footwork's there and he's the most dynamic guy in the world. To me, he's a robotic guy with limited movement who'd be best sticking behind his jab and hoping to land his killer blow, which is the one right hand. Um, either way, the point of all access is selling the fight. It did that. How relevant any of the points I've just mentioned actually will be in the fight is very, very debatable. I'm looking forward to this one. I'd recommend watching all access if you want something to get you in the mood for the fight. Do let me know your thoughts. Many thanks.